Peter Mudfish. There's got to be a reason you brought mudfish into the studio. <laughs> are they, these are natives? Yeah, yeah, not just any mudfish. These are Canterbury mudfish, so um, found only in the Canterbury region. Um, and yeah, they are natives, only found uh, in New Zealand. There's five species of mudfish in the country, but um, yeah, on the east coast here we have our very own. Um, so they're found from the Ashley River in the north right down to the Waitaki. We're actually found on the south bank of the Waitaki, so they're slightly Otago as well. But yeah, but only just. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So what's their, what's their normal habitat? Yeah, uh, well these are nocturnal fish, um, and they're normally found um, in the smaller streams. They're not particularly good swimmers, so you're not going to find them in the big braided rivers like the Waimakariri or the Rakaia. They're in the small spring-fed streams that are in the gaps in between. Um, so they want, would once have been white, quite widespread across the plains um, in sort of one homogenous population, um, but now they're restricted to just um, discrete populations. Sounds very much as though they're endangered. Yeah, so they're ranked, um, DOC has a threat ranking system and these guys are um, nationally critical, which is as high as it gets. Um, that's sort of kākāpō, black stilt, takahe level um, endangered, so they're one of the most endangered fish in the country. Um, and that's because, uh, not just because we don't have that many sites left, but because the number of sites are still declining. We're still seeing that, um, yeah, we're losing populations. Is that because the streams and things are disappearing? Yeah, that's um, one of the reasons. Um, last year, for instance, we lost them out of a whole catchment. Um, because you know it's been so dry the last couple of years. And yeah, it's um, going to get dry for the next year, so. Yeah, yeah. So um, <coughs> these guys have a really um, awesome ability to actually live out of water, um, but they're a fish, so it's within reason. So what they'll do when the water levels drop is they'll um, squirm down into damp places like spring heads or. Um, where there's still moisture remaining, you know, following tree roots and cracks in the ground. And then they'll um, sit there and they're basically waiting for the water to come back. Um, and, and hence the name mudfish. Yeah, well, when they were first found, they were actually dug up. So, <laughs> um, yeah, they were first found in Oxford um, by a man called Mr Burrows, which seems appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> that he was burrowing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so what do they eat in their natural in their natural areas? Um, so they're... They eat um, live food, so they're all the sort of little micro crustaceans and invertebrates that are in the water. They'll be hunting them, um, and they've got quite a wide range of food. But um, I mean, I've got a stream at the base of my house, yeah, which is a mud, muddy sort of bottom. Mm. Can I get any of any of your mudfish and let them go in there and liberate them? <laughs> well, it depends what else is living in your stream. Eels and ducks. Uh, yeah, see, there you go. So um, another reason they're endangered is predators. Um, so mudfish do best where there's only mudfish. Um, and eels are predators of them. So um, we have, um, yeah, high eel numbers and mudfish don't go together. Uh, right. And trout as well. Brown trout are really efficient predators of um, mudfish, so they don't live too long together either. Is there a positive for farmers having these? Um, well, I guess it's a sign that they've got um, been looking after their streams well. Um, I don't think there's a negative to having them. It's all part of the biodiversity of the plains, and to be able to say that you've got one of the most endangered fish on the country in the country um, on your property, I think you know shows good stewardship of how they're looking after the land. Because farmers, seriously, farmers do want to look after the land and that's why we've got QE2 uh, areas being closed off and yep. predator-free areas. and yeah, yeah, that's right. And that's what we're seeing. We've got landowners that have been doing things like um, creating deeper pools so that um, the water level will stay for longer. Um, and doing I'm... it very carefully, Anita. So that... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's right, yeah. Um, and yeah, um, there's another landowner, um, yeah, uh, that I work with who's, um, you know, just got these beautiful carracks and flax lined streams and he's just very proud of um, the way that he's maintained those streams and um, only does sheep grazing along those margins and keeps the other bits of his farm for cattle. So what, what would, if you had a magic wand and this yeah. is your opportunity to say to farmers, hey listen yep. guys, <laughs> what, what's your request? Yeah, well I think, um, like this isn't an either or situation, these guys are found on working farms and so what I'd love farmers to do is um, if they have mudfish is just 
to consider it in their farming operations. Um, when sites dry, um, the fish can be trampled by um, stock going through them. So even um, if you've got mudfish and the site's dry, you do still need to keep stock out of the stream beds. Um, and, and how do you know you've got mudfish? Oh, well, I mean, they're nocturnal, so it is difficult. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I've, I've been to properties where the farmers, you know, obviously he said, you know, I've been here and I think you're wasting your time, and then the next day we'll come, because I set traps overnight, because um, they come out when they're feeding and go into my traps. And, um, and, and yeah, I've said, uh, gone the next day and pulled up traps, and they're quite amazed. So um, the plant on the top's one of the good things to look for. So this is actually a native fern called Isola rubra, so that can be an indicator. They're often at sites that have stiller water where you get this. And this time of year, if you can see clear bits in the water, um, the young of the mudfish are out, and they're out during the day, and you can see them. They're sort of like one or two centimetres long, just wriggling in the water column during the day. So have a look on a sunny day into the water, and you might see those. Anita, thank you very much, and thank you for bringing your five little friends in. <laughs>